Hey everybody, this is part 15 of my Let's Play Night in the Woods series. Uh, we left May right as she was about to uh, do the last band practice in the game, thank God. So let's get started. Hey dude. You okay? You look tired. Ugh, I was up all night. They were fixing the roof door. And it was super loud. Roof door? Yeah, the door at the top of the stairs that goes out onto the roof. Now I can, like, I don't know, race from that door down in the lobby up to the roof and pee off the side of the building? Yeah, maybe not. But what's to stop random people from doing that, too? Dude, it'll be fine. Sorry, I'm just tired. Fair. Ready to go? Yeah, let's do this shit. Oh my god, everything is bad, and I'm bad at this. Ah, jeez. Yeah, that was not good. So fast. You just pushed a button. I am so tired. I strained my vocal cords yelling. Awesome. I'm going to sound so husky. And anyway, I don't even know if they're dreams or not. And this guy, who I think was a ghost, kidnapped some kid and also I think was in my head after while I was sleeping. And anyway, yeah, I think I need to do something, because this is scary. Well, that's not what I was expecting to hear tonight. Are you okay, dude? No! I'm kind of freaked out. It probably wasn't a ghost. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, definitely. Ugh. Okay, fine, I'll go figure this out myself. Aw, dude, don't be like that. You got us. Aw. Dudes. Okay, fine. So, we need to maybe see if there's, like, some ghosty stuff happening around here. Like, from a source we can trust. Such as... Does the newspaper have, like, a ghost section? What? Why is that a dumb question? You know, we could go check the library. For books about it? No, they have the local paper on file, going back a century. If there's some secret history of kidnapper ghosts, we'll find it there, probably. Oh, wow, I didn't know they had that. I thought it was just like a broken down old bunch of books. When's the last time you were at the library? We actually have one of the nicer ones around. Oh, how? Rich dude who paid for it way back when. Yeah, they set up a foundation and... 
Never mind. Let's go. Can we regroup after? Uh, sure. Okay, we'll be back. Woo-hoo, ghosties. That's the spirit. Look, jobs. Weird, like, when this was painted, it was like, hey, look out the window. We're all working. Things are great. Now it's like one of the graffiti murals after someone gets shot or hit by a car. This mural is really affecting you. I forget that we live in separate realities. Mine's clearly better. Hey, closing in two hours. Okay, cool. Any idea where the microfish is? Microfish. Microfish. Third floor. Okay, thanks. Up, up, up. Looks like someone left something open on this one. It's a resume. Bob Targ, born 1967, 50 years old. Let's see. Experience, mining, construction, well drilling. I never think about getting a job when I'm old. 50's not really old. I mean, you should have money then, right? Ideally. It should be like guaranteed, should be guaranteed in general. You gonna join my young socialist chatterbox group? Holy crap. What? It's Charity Barity. What's Charity Barity? How do you not know Charity Barity? I assume this is something from school? The school of being five freaking years old? All right. So this was a thing you liked as a kid? No, I hated Charity Barity. It does look really hateable. It was like, you were under some curse where a cute thing followed you around 24 seven, yelling about like, sharing and not littering, and paying taxes. Well, that's an important, uh, skill. I was five! I'm 20 now and I still haven't paid taxes. Charity Barity goes to a state infrastructure budgeting meeting. Ugh, I forgot the worst part. It always rhymed. Charity Barity. Oh no, austerity. What's that? Reason the two bridges in and out of Saltstown are still closed. Oh, wow. You still can't, like, go to Saltstown? You're welcome to try. Jeez, they sure made a lot of these books. I think they're still making them. This one looks pretty old. Charity Barity. Danger Everywhere-ity. That's vague and disconcerting. Could have just kept updating that one book. Going up. Oh, wow, it's dusty up here. It's old up here. Sure is. Maybe your ghost is up here? 
Yep, ghost or something, whatever he was. He walked through a chain link fence or flew over it or something while carrying something. Oh, right. Well, that's even more impressive. So we're going to go find this guy because he took someone and he's like somehow connected to this thing I've been going through. And that's not good. That all sounded a lot more badass in my head. It's okay. It was fine. All right, there she is. Cool. So, I have no idea how to use it. Really? I can't know how to do everything. I'm sorry, but what expertise have you brought to this thus far? This whole thing was my idea. No, your idea was ghost hunting. My idea is to do at least a tiny bit of research on it. If you think it's so stupid, why are you here? Because you're my friend, you asshole. Aww. Ugh. Aw, we flans be a twist. Here, let me get this set up. We'll be here all night if your dumbass is in charge. All right, so what are we looking for? I want to steer. No. Move, I'm steering. Ow. Jeez, May. I'm sorry. Okay, 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 okay. How do we do this? Uh, step one, look at the screen. Step two, move around and look at stuff. Step three, find ghost. Sure. Spectral happenings at Possum Jump. Two local sweethearts were startled this past Sunday night as they hiked along the wooded overlook known as Possum Jump. According to the lovebirds, at approximately 11.45 a.m., a picture appeared, a figure appeared to walk from the edge of the cliff out into the open air and then disappeared. Forestry workers the next morning were unable to locate any evidence of anyone having leapt from the great height, leaving the exact nature of what the two saw a mystery. A decent hike up into the state forest hills, Possum Jump is famous for its beautiful view of the Echo Reservoir. It also ho holds historical importance as it hosts the lonely graves of several persons involved in the Possum Massacre. Hey, look at this. Hmm, yeah. Looks like Possum Jump? Let me read it. It's Possum Jump. Okay, yeah, that's back up in the state park, right? Yeah. Ever been up there? Nope. Gonna check it out, though. Go nuts. That's actually probably only a mile or so from Mrs. Miranda's house. Back up in the hills. All kinds of stuff up there. Well, I'll try to avoid any basements. Or corpse husbands. Co-signed. Deep Hollow County mourns. The final group of bodies from the 1888 explosion have been recovered two days shy of the one year anniversary of the tragedy. These five men bring the total of dead to 112. Two of the men, Addison Pines and Henry Harvey, were the ones who set off the explosion. Although mine bosses had been informed that gas pockets were present in that section, they elected not to inform Pine and Harvey of the possible danger. The other three bodies belong to Peter Bledsoe, Christian Stanoff, and Peter Latha. Peter Latha's funeral arrangements will be handled by Father Lidas as the man's widow has since returned to Hungary with his two orphans. Strange But True, A Tale of Teeth. Strange But True is our ongoing series about the weird and forgotten aspects of Deep Hollow County history and culture, published weekly. Bad bosses figure heavily into Possum Springs history, and this morbid tale of crime and secret societies is no exception. The story goes, in 1870, a local mine boss was skimming workers on their pay. A group of miners confronted him while he was in the act. He denied everything with many a slur and punched the miners' leader, Darnell Glace, in the face causing him to lose his last remaining tooth. The miners knew how much Darnie's tooth meant to him and they descended on the boss. A few held the boss down while others removed all of his teeth with pliers. 
The teeth were passed out to the miners and a secret society was created with a vow to protect the workers' interests. Membership was based on owning one of these teeth and each was marked with a symbol of their choosing. These symbols were used around the coal patch to organize meetings and make announcements. The boss survived his attack, but never named his attackers for fear of implicating himself. When he died a few years later, members dug up his grave to retrieve his skull. It was used in ceremonies performed before going out for retribution. All would gather around, place their teeth into the sockets, and later retrieve their tooth after the retribution was completed. Upon a member's death, their tooth would be passed to a new member. Teeth of members in jail would be left in their sockets until their fates were decided. After the strike of 1889, the society dwindled. Occasionally, a descendant of one of these men will find a tooth with strange markings in their home. Strange, but true. Oh, wow, this is gnarly and awesome. <laughs> oh my God. Tragedy at Stafford Mine. An explosion occurred at 6.20 a.m. at the Stafford Mine. All work has ceased while men attempt to rescue any survivors. So far, three men have been pulled out alive along with 20 dead. The explosion occurred 10 miles deep in the mine and only one group of men were able to escape before the elevator's rope snapped and the next group of men plummeted to their death. So far, hopes of finding more survivors is low. The main path to the tunnel caved in due to the explosion and supervisors are still attempting to piece together exactly where everyone was during the incident. Possum Massacre. Severe violence broke out at the Stafford Mine strike today. The bosses arrived to attempt to renew talks and were taunted by some of the children present. Rocks were thrown and the National Guard and strike breakers opened fire on the crowd. After a few minutes, the smoke cleared and the gory scene revealed. Nine miners are dead with a dozen more injured. A young brother and sister were also shot dead as they were delivering a package of food to their father and uncle who were on strike below when the shooting broke out. The photograph of the two children, aged seven and nine, who were shot in cold blood has circulated far outside of our little county. The heinous act led to a personal visit from the governor to the strike site to meet with strikers. Independent inspectors were also brought in and talks finally began 45 days since the start of the strike. The bosses have agreed to comply with the current safety standards and to honor the demands of the miners. A strike at Stafford Mine has been called. The idea first arose after the memorial for the 1888 explosion victims. Miners gathered in the home of Arthur Borowski to continue the memorial to their friends. They also began recounting all of the promises the bosses had reneged on this past year, including basic safety measures to avoid another explosion. A group of 20 miners entered the mines to begin the strike, and 30 more joined them before morning. All work has been stopped at the mine, and the miners are now striking in eight-hour shifts. Their wives and children have begun to bring food and water for the men. The bosses have stated that the mines are safer than they were a year ago and that there is no need to act in this manner. Hmm, this is interesting, but yeah, not exactly about a ghost. Local ghost Little Joe added again. As the school children are quick to inform you, Possum Springs has at least one resident who won't show up on any census survey. Little Joe, purportedly the ghost of Joe Shade, a miner who died in mysterious circumstances some decades ago, is a favorite spook story of the whimsical and weird members of our community. His most recent activity seems to involve getting up out of his coffin in the old section of Possum Springs Cemetery and strolling around, unnerving visitors to the largest graveyard in Deep Hollow County. His grave has become a destination for unruly and often destructive local youths, and as such, Possum Springs City Council is considering erecting an iron gate to protect the historical tombstones that fill the small hollow where Joe Shade lies buried. Police have also stepped up patrols in the area. So be warned, thrill seekers. You may not see a ghost, but you may see a fine for trespassing. Ooh, look. Scooch so I can see. Graveyard, that's a gimme. I mean, if you're looking for ghost stuff, that's where they make a lot of them. Looks like they saw him in the old section. Oh, cool, that's where his grave is. I'm actually interested in that. How could you not be interested? This is like actual dangerous ghost stuff. I like history. Ghosts are history. History that won't stay history. Ha <laughs> ha that's actually pretty good. Underground gases afflict many. 
The houses on Larch Street have been evacuated after the discovery of gas buildup in the basements was found to have led to hallucinations in scattered members of the households. For the past several weeks, residents have been complaining of family members who began hearing voices or seeing things that were not there. One older woman was found having an animated discussion with an empty chair. When pressed, she calmly explained that she was talking to her sister, who had passed away some 50 years ago. Two nights ago, the son of Carson Zimmer ran out of the house and leapt into Cooper's Pond one mile up the road. Moments before this, the child had been readying for bed and, according to another sibling, became increasingly agitated. The last words he uttered were about some sort of song before he dashed out of the house and into the night where his watery grave awaited him. This last event persuaded residents to request help from officials to see if this is related to St. Lovin's Lantern, a phenomenon where exposure to specific underground gases leads certain victims to experience waking dreams, auditory hallucinations, and the sense of unseen presences. Preliminary tests indicate that gas is present in the, in the homes and mining officials are moving the residents until more tests can be completed. No ghosts to be found here. The way you say ghost, it sounds like you don't believe me. Ghostly rumors haunt new historical society. The Possum Springs Historical Society's conversion of the Schreigeist House into its new headquarters and education center has hit a snag. Custodial head Jed Newsom has resigned, citing strange occurrences in the old manor. I'd be there after hours doing my work, and I'd hear someone walking around trying doorknobs. I came out to see who was fooling, but there was never nobody there, said Newsom. Trying to get this map room operational for the children, all the while I'm looking over my shoulder, expecting to see God knows what. Mr. Newsom had previously requested to work only daylight hours when other staff were present in the building, but even that proved to be too terrifying. I don't go to the off-limits area anymore. I don't go up past the second floor and then only to go to the office. I know the others laugh, Sam C and Little Joe or something, but they can all go spit. Little Joe, for the uninitiated, was a local ghost story popular some years ago. The Possum Springs Historical Society has refused to comment on Mr. Newsom's claims at this time. Hey, hey, hey! Ghosts spotted. Historical Society? History that won't stay history. In a history place. History place? Yeah. I've never been. You didn't go back in school? I think this was when I wasn't in school. Oh, after the softball incident. Yeah, mostly just watched TV and did therapy. Well, it's actually a pretty cool old house. It used to be owned by one of the mine owners or something. Railroad, mine, steel mill, something like that. An actual haunted house. Uh, no. Elementary school kids are there all the time. They have like summer arts and crafts programs. Oh, well, still worth checking out. Okay, well, that's like three leads. Let's boogie. Let's boogie. Also, is that it? Yeah, three clues. We got three leads. You're a regular detective. May Borowski, detective of ghosts. All right, all right, let's go. So, we've got some leads. Can I, bar can I borrow your car this week? Do you even have a license? I mean, no, regardless, but do you? Nope. No license, no credit cards, don't believe in money. You just believe in other people's cars and money. I didn't choose to be born into this society. Okay, well, I have, you know, a job, so I can't drive you around to all of these spots. I can maybe do the graveyard. I need to go there anyway. Cool. I'll see if Greg wants to do the other two. You know, like, and I probably don't have to say this, but just because something happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Hey, nerd, ever hear that history repeats? It does. It does the same thing over and over again. So we've just been, a, we've just been in a loop since we were living in caves. Yeah. That's science. Oh my freaking god. Ahem. What is... Shh. Is that Miss Quelsey? Oh wow, haven't seen her since graduation. 
she was always kind of a badass. School district did not fund that art program at all, but she made it work. She was like some sort of art teacher survivalist. Wow, I never realized. I think they pay her in bits of string and empty soda cans. Should be saving that string to repair those bridges into Saltstown. There you go. Thank you all for coming to the second meeting of the Possum Springs Poetry Society. Do you want to stick around for this? Yeah. Tonight we have new poems from myself and Fisherman Jones and Selma Ann Forrester. I will start us off with one of my own. She's from some big city, right? Yeah. How'd she end up here? Who knows? <clears throat> Letter to my worst student. To my worst student. The subject of my stories, I tell friends back home. When they ask about life, out here in the sticks. It's you. I worry. At the end of my life, you will be the only one I remember. Why did you key my car? I know it was you, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Is that legal? What? Talking about details about students like that? She didn't name names. Yeah, she did. Okay, no full names. Next up, Fisherman Jones. Fisherman Jones has a poem for us. Two, two poems. They're short though. Two poems, take it away. Uh, hi folks, thanks. This is called Tunnel Eels. Tunnel Eels, Tunnel Eels. I do not know how it feels to be in darkness all the time, born in muck and raised in slime, but neither do you know paths I've trudged, so it hardly is your place to judge. Okay, that's one poem. The next one is shorter. This is called Tunnel Frogs. Tunnel Frog swims in the dark. Must think it would be a lark to be a fisherman like me. But what do you know, amphibie? That's it. That's great. Thank you, Fisherman Jones. Dude is really worried about what fish think. That tunnel always spooks me. Finally, a poem by Selma Ann Forrester. Yay, Selmers! Thanks, May. You know her? Dude, she's like your neighbor. Oh. She writes these really funny, dorky short poems. I'm up for something short and funny. This is called There's No Reception in Possum Springs. Ha ha ha! She's not wrong. <coughs> No reception here. I wave my black phone in the air like a flare, like a prayer, but no reception. I read on the internet, baby face boy billionaire, phone app sold, made more money in one day than my family over 100 generations, more than my whole world ever has. World where house buying jobs became rent paying jobs, became living with family jobs, boy billionaires. Money is access, access to politicians waiting for us to die, lead in our water, alcohol, and painkillers. Replace my job with an app. Replace my dreams of a house and a yard with a couch in the basement. The future is yours, force 24-7 entrepreneurs. I just want a paycheck and my own life. I'm on the couch in the basement. They're in the house and the yard. Some night I will catch a bus out to the West Coast and burn their Silicon City to the ground. Holy shit. Wow. Damn. Huh. She rhymed entrepreneur. I don't even know what that word means. Thanks, everyone. Is she always like this? No. Wow. Huh. Thanks, everyone. See you in two weeks. Hey, Selmers. What? I liked your weird poem. Thanks, I wrote it myself. Wait, was the assumption that she didn't write it hers? Nice work, Smelmer. I don't like that nickname. What are you two? Sorry. It's cool. Can we go now? <laughs>